Hello everyone and welcome back to Computer Vision Lecture Series. This is Lecture 8, Part 3. In this lecture, we are going to continue talking about dense motion estimation. In the last lecture, we saw how uh, parametric motion can be resolved by, um, by using our uh, non-linear least squares methods. And uh, for different transformation, for example, if, it, uh, if the movement is a translation or it's a Euclidean type or is there a similarity type or a fine or even projective, for each and every of these kind of transformation, we can just use its uh, rel related Jacobians as mentioned in this matrix form. And we can solve this Jacobian and find the unknowns, uh, which is the movement or the motion vector. And then uh, use it for uh, computing your um, motion. Um, between the two frames or uh, two images, whatever is the case. And today we are going to continue talking about how uh, we can estimate optical flow and how many different methods can be uh, used for uh, calculating estimate uh, or estimating optical flow. Optical flow after estimating um, we can find the generic motion flow or the generic motion estimation of your between your frames in the video or between two images uh, so the general the most general form of op optical flow can be represented by this equation where uh, ui represents each and every pixel in your given uh, image i0 and so uh, Using this error metric, you can find the motion for uh, or the optical flow for each and every picture, pixel. So essentially, this is very um, dense, and uh, for every pixel, you will have a motion vector. However, it's uh, inefficient to compute. It's uh, a highly complex problem, and it has a large number of unknowns, and we have not enough information uh, available. And it's not always the case that we need uh, this. Uh, every pixel level information and uh, the obvious solution we already know that for each pixel in i0 we find some random um, some pixel in i1 with the same color for example so for every pixel you will have uh, let's say if you are using an rgb color space with a range of values of 0 to 255 then you can have 256 color for every pixel and um, so let's say you have a pixel value of uh, 120 and you just have to look for that pixel value uh, in your next frame to match these two pixels and uh, estimate the flow between them. Um, but let's say if you have 1 million uh, pixels in your input image, then there will be, uh, uh, in addition with 256 color, there, can, there could be many, many solution. And it's not necessary that um, every pixel will have a unique solution because there are only 256 colors it is highly likely that the, for every pixel value you can you have thousands of uh, matches so this obvious solution will not work so we move uh, a bit ahead and think uh, in terms of patches so how do we do uh, patch based optical flow so instead of looking in the neighbor uh, in the whole image for a particular pixel value we look at um, patches uh, as well so you have to define some patches in advance and you have to find these patches in the next image and compute the optical flow between them. Um, so instead in patch based approach, basically instead of for every pixel, you have a local neighborhood for which you determine the optical flow or its uh, mm, pixel for its uh, determine the neighborhood to find the optical flow. What it means is that you fix your neighborhood in your reference image and you look for that kind of that neighborhood in your um, target image and when you find this matches then you uh, compute the optical flow for your uh, given pixel value okay and uh, you can use this patch based approach uh, using the same uh, algorithms as, as we have discussed before you can also use image pyramids uh, as a feature extractor or a um, feature scalar uh, to use uh, patches. So if you reduce the image scale to the coarsest image scale, uh, there it's easier to form patches and then you find uh, optical flow for that uh, using this patch based approach and then um, compute it for your whole neighborhood of the pixel and then slowly um, scale up and then you refine your um, optical flow vector as we have discussed in the previous part 
and in, in an iterative fashion and so on and so forth and you will find for your original image scale the final optical flow value for each and every pixel. However, this uh, problem is not the most efficient because let's say in, uh, if your movement is too high or if the frame difference between the two frames for which you are calculating the optical flow is too high, maybe an, a new object appears. For example, a very good scenario is uh, monitoring traffic, right? If you are traffic, uh, if you are um, if you're, if you're trying to uh, take two images uh, separated by a few seconds, uh, there are a lot of different new cars or automobiles coming into your uh, image frame and a lot of objects which were there in your previous frame have left. So because of these occlusions, uh, because of this uh, addition and removal of new objects because of this motion, um, it's not always easy to go with the patch based uh, approach. Um, so for patch based approach, uh, let's recap in a way what we did before uh, for feature matching or feature extraction is to find uh, this reference patches, right? You have to find this uh, features which are uh, matching in these two different uh, images. And then you find define this local neighborhood uh, using this uh, features and then you find the optical flow based on that. Um, so the natural question comes to the mind is what features uh, are the best, right? And we have seen this before in our feature matching uh, feature extraction uh, lecture series. Is um, if you if you take a low textured um, neighborhood, uh, there are not uh, uh, th there is not much features here. So the um, uh, to define a neighborhood of these features is quite uh, difficult. Okay, and it's not easy to find a translation. Um, from this uh, region into a feature. Uh, so we need more distinctive or discriminative features such that it is easy to match the feature uh, from one to image to the uh, another image. So essentially here, here you are also find, uh, trying to solve uh, a correspondence problem by finding a matching pixel values or matching feature values and then you find uh, optical flow for each of your pixel for that neighborhood. Uh, uh, in the in the edges also it's um, it's a bit better than using uh, any low texture regions um, because in edges if you go in this direction then the features do not change as much whereas if you go in the horizontal direction uh, sorry the perpendicular direction to the uh, edges then the features will change uh, dramatically so this direction can be used for uh, patches for finding these patches but they are not they might uh, you might end up in similar errors because if you find similar edges somewhere else in the image then uh, you are doing uh, then your correspondence is incorrect and ultimately your uh, calculation or estimation of opt optical flow will also be incorrect. So we go basically towards uh, more higher textured regions which work the best which we have already seen for uh, corner detection as well. So um, essentially what it is is uh, you find this uh, sum of squared uh, different surfaces at the three different image locations. Uh, when we have seen here in the high texture, in the in near the edges and near the low texture image. And the neighborhood will give you a very nice local um, optima here. There is a clear, clear optima when you have when you are finding a, a surface or a patches for a neighborhood which has a high variability around it. Whereas for edges, it is there is sort of a valley. So if you go in this direction, it is unclear and there are multiple solutions possible. Similarly, if you have or if you are looking to in a low textured regions, uh, you will get a lot of local minimas or local optimas. And therefore, it's not um, uh, a clear answer or a clear solution for your optical flow problem. So we have seen that uh, again in case of patch based approaches uh, the best way to go is uh, to find uh, regions which have high textures or high variability or high feature distinctiveness and uh, so it, it, it depends on a lot of factors on what you are doing uh, in this image for example it's clear to see that this region will have very distinctive features and uh, that should be the direction to go okay so uh, how do we uh, the general optical flow 
uh, without any constraints without any um, additional information prior knowledge or additional um, uh, parameterization uh, it can be represented as sum of squared differences of optical flow for each and every pixel in this form this equation is quite naive and uh, 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 th this is the shows the basic uh, definition of uh, solving optical flow is uh, minimizing uh, this error metric um, but we can include uh, some regularization uh, ideas or some regularization uh, constraint because um, we know some things in advance and we can use that to influence uh, the error metric to uh, reach an optima uh, faster so what can be done is uh, we know that ui we should not choose uh, some arbitrary um, value or an arbitrary pixel we should choose instead uh, ui such that uh, it has similar um, neighborhoods and similar um, uh, optical flow for that neighborhood so if you have such a neighborhood then you can add a regularization term that its neighbor in the neighborhood uh, all the optical flow vectors will have similar values and therefore you can penalize the error metric using this information so this is what it is called uh, regularization so let's say if you have fixed a uh, pixel value or a pixel location in an in your reference image and you have defined a neighborhood of that pixel and then you're looking for the same neighborhood in the target image or in the next frame and you want to compute the error metric here okay um, now given this assumption that the neighborhood of this pixel have has similar values of optical flow the changes of optical flow will be minimum right so uh, we add a regularization term called uh, the gradient uh, or the delta uh, sorry the gradient uh, of ui of these neighboring uh, pixel neighborhood and um, we penalize the error metric and it will gain a uh, uh, minimum value based on this uh, neighborhood pixels uh, you can also include instead of uh, um, a gradient you can include a delta of u which is represented or is just a uh, uh, partial derivatives in x and y direction and if you take the partial derivatives in x and y direction in the neighborhood of ui it is going to be minimum because it does not change as much as ui and so this regularization constraint will bring us to the solution uh, a bit faster uh, this is just one example of a regularization term that penalizes uh, dissimilar UIs. However, uh, that could be depending on the problem, you can find different um, um, regularization terms. Another way of uh, finding optical flow is uh, layer based. So um, let's say you have a video uh, uh, and this technique is more popular with uh, animation, uh, generating animations and uh, movie making so you, you have set of um, you have a video which has a feature length and there are multiple frames which uh, change over time uh, or they shift or they move uh, an example is given here on the right uh, top right corner um, so the method approached here is that each layer is assumed to have a, a constant optical flow and so the image is divided into different layers which uh, separates each part of the image uh, it, based on its optical flow vector uh, so what we do here for example um, so it will have one flow vector per layer more or less what I say so to just give an example what uh, is done here is uh, let's say these are the two different uh, frames here as you can see that the tree has moved from the left frame in the left hand direction in the right hand frame and you draw this line or you take the features along this line in both the frames in all the frames in the particular video and you plot them uh, or you stack them horizontally in this direction okay so when you do that you see that the tree has a high uh, the the, uh, the tree in the front the features on this tree uh, moves uh, quite fast and it's apparent from this motion as well that an objects nearer to the camera center uh, moves faster than the objects away from the camera center which also we have discussed in previous parts 
Um, so here it is clear that this tree um, trunk is visible, uh, which has a higher speed of movement along the frames than the other um, uh, parts of the video. So uh, for example, the tree in the back, it moves slower or um, yeah, it moves slower than the tree in the front. And using this information, you can assign specific optical flow uh, values or optical flow vector um, per image layer. Uh, and then compute the um, uh, overall optical flow and hence you will get a um, final motion uh, motion estimation for your image. So the general approach for uh, layer based optical flow is um, you take pairs of, uh, you start with pairs of uh, frames. First you generate the flow vector or the, which is the most coarsest or the most um, roughest uh, um, estimate of the initial layers. And then you refine this layer across the whole animation to finally achieve um, a nice looking um, uh, optical flow vector. Uh, when, when you look at this uh, diagram here, it looks like you are looking at some segmentations as well. So based on this movement, it's easy to segment different parts of the image. And um, because if uh, one object, for example, this tree, it's a, a one single object and uh, if you track this tree across frame, you're essentially uh, uh, also indirectly solving segmentation problem. So the question here is, can we use this flow information, optical flow information for as a segmentation prior for solving segmentation uh, task? It's something to think about. It's not um, part of the lecture, but it looks quite nice that how uh, an optical flow generated uh, for a video can also essentially be used for uh, segmenting the uh, different objects in the video. Um, that was uh, the most basic way of uh, solving optical flow through layer based approaches. Um, many follow up papers have come and I mean these days convolutional neural networks and deep learning has solved um, or created more uh, better state of the art uh, solutions to this problem. Uh, I for, uh, for a good start of these kind of papers, I would uh, recommend you to go and uh, look at this paper here. Uh, they have given um, a good analysis of uh, a lot of uh, different uh, state of the art and they have also produced nice looking um, optical flows, which also look similar to segmentation. Okay, so motion estimation. So first we consider a simple motion flow, only translation motion, we then, uh, which uh, the entire image moves uniformly in one direction or a single move object moves from a static background, things like that. And then we added more constraints to it that the movement was not just translational, it was rotational. We added parametric motions and then we added um, how to calculate uh, dense motion estimation, which is finding vector, uh, optical vector for each and every pixel in your image, uh, having its op uh, its own optical flow. We also saw how we did for um, um, patch based approaches, and then how we could regularize the normal uh, gener generic optical flow equation. We also saw how we can do it through image pyramids in the beginning. So we have seen a lot of different uh, methods for estimating um, motion. And um, in the next lecture, we are going to see how we can solve uh, stereo correspondence problems. So um, until then, uh, goodbye. Thank you.